So in this video, I'm going to talk about naming chiral centers and designating a chiral center as R or S configuration. Once again, it's probably really helpful to um, make a model kit, but you definitely do not need it to name molecules and designate R and S configurations. So first, you have to there are certain steps so I want to start off with a carbon bonded to a CH3 and OH and then the fluorine is going to come out at you and then a hydrogen is going to be going away from you and so once you've identified that this carbon is in fact a chiral center a chiral carbon due to the fact that it has four different things bonded to it then you can begin to determine whether it's R or S so we'll start here so number one the first thing you have to do is find out which atom has the higher priority so you want to do it by highest atomic number so highest atomic number gets the higher priority and so what do I mean by that well let's do it in blue so we'll start with the uh, fluorine so fluorine's number atomic number so atomic number in blue So fluorine's atomic number is, and so fluorine's atomic number would be 9. So now the next thing I'm going to look at is the oxygen right here, because that's the atom bonded to the carbon. And so oxygen's atomic number is 8, and then this carbon right here is 6, and then hydrogen is 1. And so the highest atomic number gets a higher priority. So when it comes to this, this fluorine will be number one because it's the highest atomic number. The oxygen here will be number two. The carbon here will be number three. And the hydrogen here will be number four in ranking the priority. So now you have to. Um, count which way it goes like so if you want to go one two three so it will be rotating this way to the left or counterclockwise and that would be designated as an S and then if it were to go the other way which it doesn't it would be R so think R is right S is left so R is clockwise, S is counterclockwise. So this assignment of the configuration I will do in green. So it would be an S chiral carbon. And we'll do more practice, but if you have multiple bonds to something, so let's say if you have C actually we'll talk about that once it comes up it doesn't really come up too often but one thing to remember is if you have isotopes so let's say if you had a carbon 13 and a carbon 12 the carbon 13 so higher mass isotopes isotopes let me just erase that isotopes with higher mass have priority so carbon 13 would be number 1 and carbon 12 will be number 2 and so it's really important to remember that 
if you have enantiomers, they will have opposite configurations. So, let's do one example of this. So, we're going to use the same molecule as before for one. We just draw it out. And so, we'll just rank them and assign the configuration. So, this will be one, two, three, four. So it would go this way. And you have to make sure, one thing I forgot to mention is, you have to make sure that the lowest substituent, so the lowest ranked, the number four thing, has to be in the back, so pointing away from you in the wedges. Or else you're going to have to reverse everything. And I'll tell you what I mean by that. So this would be S and so one two three four this hydrogen is coming at you but you can essentially just ignore that for now and just go one two three so if you go in order of one two three it will go this way and you would think that it's an S but if the lowest priority thing, the number four thing, is not pointing away from you, so it's not a dash wedge, um, then you would have to reverse it. So that's an easy way to do it. So originally you would draw it as S, but since the hydrogen is pointing at you and not towards the back, this would be designated as an R center. So these two are enantiomers. And so in the next video I'm going to do some practice problems and I think that really helps uh, you see it better and practice in organic chemistry just helps a lot. And so I hope you found this video helpful. If it did please like it and share it with your friends.